there's a cop who has killed three people on the job uh, is now being sued for excessive force by a woman. And remember, the vast majority, 99.9% of cops won't kill one person on the job. This man has killed three. Here's footage from a previous incident, and I will bring you up to date on this latest incident. Here it is. All right, let me give you the background. Put up the picture for a mask. I'm going to give you a very disturbing history here. Officer Blaine Newton handcuffed and kneels on a pregnant Deja Stallings. That's what you saw in Missouri, Officer Blaine Newton, who's seven years at the Kansas City Police Department, have been tainted with accusations of killing three civilians. Seven years, he's killed three people. 99.9% of officers will not kill one over the span of over 20 years. He has killed three in seven. Police brutality, he's being accused of. Uh, legal actions against him remains. He remains on the job, however, even though a new lawsuit has accused him of excessive force against a black woman. In a lawsuit filed on the 6th of February, the, uh, the Platte County Circuit Court Bermika Mitchell of Langsing, Kansas, accused Officer Blaine Newton of assault and battery, stemming from events that unfolded on September 11th, 2022. According to the lawsuit, an unknown individual motioned for Nelson to arrest Mitchell for trespassing, at which time the officer grabbed and twisted both her arms in a forceful manner and took his boots heel and grounded it into Mitchell's foot. His handcuffing during an arrest of Mitchell, which according to the lawsuit, Mitchell said he had no legal basis to do, was done so tightly that it left visible marks, the lawsuit claims. After being detained in a private room at the store, the officer told Mitchell she would not face trespassing and resisting arrest charges if she agreed to, quote, not make a scene as she left. The lawsuit states, according to the Kansas Star, in the lawsuit, Mitchell says she did not resist arrest. No charges were filed against her. That sounds like the legal detention to me. Uh, so court records obtained by the Kansas City Star showed that while the Kansas City Police Department Office of Community Complaints did sustain Mitchell's allegations of excessive force against Newton, there were no details on the disciplinary action said to have been taken against him May 2023 letter from the department, that, that's according to what they said. So what do we have so far? She gets arrested, she gets detained, she gets physically assaulted. She gets uh, basically incarcerated in a private room, all right? Some would call this kidnap. He lets her go, says oh, no charges will be filed, likely because he could not substantiate them based on the facts and the video that was likely around. So he then lets her go, says you can go as long as you don't make a scene. She doesn't make a scene, she leaves. She ends up filing a complaint, good for her. She files a complaint. The outfit responsible for investigating the complaint sustained it. They come back, they said, yep, yep, the complaint is sustained. She's right, he's wrong. They get a letter from the department saying, yes, complaint has been sustained, agreed. However, there is no record of what they did or did not do to the officer. There's more, uh, this is not the first lawsuit involving Officer Newton and his conduct. Which has included kneeling down on a heavily pregnant black woman named Deja Stallings. September 30th, 2020, Newton had uh, Newton held down Ms. Stallings, who at the time was 25 years old, nine months pregnant. As he arrested her in Kansas City, Atlanta Black Star reported, her baby was born two weeks early. 
via emergency C-section following that incident. Authorities said the arrest happened after Stallings interfered during the attempted arrest of local activist Troy Robertson by grabbing an officer. The footage of her arrest would show Newton's knee on her back as he handcuffed her sparked outrage. Protests and calls for then Kansas City Police Department Chief Richard Smith to step down. When Newton shot and killed Donnie Sanders, 47 years of age, an unarmed black man, unarmed black man in March of 2020, his dash cam also did not record the shooting. The authorities say it recorded him passing Sanders' vehicle and making a U-turn to follow him. After Sanders pulled over and ran, Newton chased him down, ordering him to stop before shooting him five times. Three bullets hit Sanders, who died in the hospital the next day. His family filed a wrongful death suit against Newton and the city's police commissioner seeking at least $10 million in compensation. The ongoing suit filed March 2022 in part accused the commissioners of failing to properly train, supervise, screen, discipline, transfer, counsel, or otherwise properly equip and control officers during those, including those who are known or should have been known to engage in the use of excessive force and or deadly force. We call that negligent retention. Negligent retention, meaning you knew this person was a bad operator. You knew this individual would likely harm somebody. And instead of either firing them, demoting them, reclassifying them, or training them, you decided to give them the next opportunity to do so. Negligent retention. He was also accused of shooting, okay, and killing Marcel T. Nelson. And Kristen Fairchild, we don't have a picture of Ms. Fairchild, both 42 years of age. Mm. Chief Graves, put her up. That's Chief Stacy Graves. She's been running the department since December 2022. Chief, let me say this to you, keep her picture up. Chief, you already know the stats. You know how rare it is to have an officer on the job seven years. He's already killed three people and has injured many more. You were a cop before becoming a chief. You have killed not one person in your long career as a police officer. You know that most cops will never kill anybody. And you also know that just because it is legally justifiable does not mean it is ethically and morally justifiable. You have a bad one among you, maybe more. Sharon, thoughts here? He's terribly soiled. And I would also go further and say negligent retention, as you said, Doc, is one thing. Oftentimes, these police departments go further than that and give commendations and awards to these these prolific, justifiably uh, shooting killers, okay? And I told you this before, when I showed up in Cleveland, for some reason, there were goofballs in the Cleveland media who had dubbed James Simone, an officer, super cop. Because he had shot mm-hmm. 11 and killed five. Mm. And I said, I'm not going to call him that. I don't know what he is, but I know that serial killers would be the only ones who would be proud of that body right. count. If you were charged with sexual assault, never convicted, DUI, not convicted, multiple. It, does that mean that you are someone that we should keep around? Right. Or someone we should perhaps look into and say, what, what started this? Why did he want to become a cop? What, what's going on here? This is ludicrous. That's right. And that's why we advocate obviously for at least at least yearly psychological evaluations. You know, the cop you are on day one may not be the same cop you are day 365. That part. Right? And and it may be a way to help so that you do not become a cop like this over time. All right, we're gonna bring you updates as they come.